All right. So today we are talking about the top 20 marketing tips for insurance professionals. And just to kind of give you some insight, this is one of those webinars that we pretty much do every year. And we, we kind of bring it to the table when uh, things are happening that uh, are important for us to really connect with the job that we do every day. And so essentially, uh, because this is September, uh, the Life Insurance Awareness Month, we thought we'd bring some of these tips and techniques to you that can help to kind of, um, you know, make your process a little bit more fruitful uh, so that, uh, you know, every effort you make during the day is going to, uh, you know, be um, as much as you can get out of it. So. Um, what we did is kind of put together a, a slide presentation with the top 20 tips that we thought were very, very implementable. In other words, you can start today with any of these tips on this webinar and begin to do maybe a little bit better job than, uh, than you're doing now. And let's face it, we all could uh, stand to uh, improve on a daily basis. So that's our effort to try and help you to kind of just further your skills as an insurance marketing professional. Uh, and let's face it, marketing is the, the caveat that kind of brings the extra to the table where it comes to our business. You know, we can meet people and, and kind of, you know, bump into people and, 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 and get referrals and such. But the things that really advance our uh, business are the marketing efforts that we do to promote what we do on a daily basis. So just to give you a little bit of background, uh, my name is David Paul. I'm the... Um, a presenter for our agent uh, university. I'm at least one of them. Uh, we've got a few folks who have joined the team and, um, and are going to be bringing some uh, new webinars to you guys uh, out there in the field. Um, you'll be hearing some announcements about those things over the, the next many months, but uh, uh, as time goes by, we're going to be adding more and more of these valuable learning opportunities uh, and, um, and just in an effort to bring more and more value to our business partners out there in the field. Uh, you know, we're just looking to add our calendar with more and more learning opportunities. So uh, again, I'm David Paul. I am, uh, you know, in the business for uh, quite some time. I, I've got about 30 years in the marketing and advertising business, about 20 years marketing insurance products. Um, so, um, you know, the efforts that, uh, that we put into this presentation are, are, are definitely developed a, over a long period of time. Uh, I've also got a good friend of mine on the, on the call with us today. His name is Rob Liano. He is um, a uh, marketing and sales coach for insurance professionals. He's a guy that uh, I've had, you know, probably a 10-year relationship with over, over the many years. We've done lots of business together, and, uh, and, and Rob has helped to... Uh, you know, kind of expand, uh, you know, my understanding of marketing as well as uh, many of the agents that we do business with. Um, so he's definitely a guy I rely on to sort of add a little bit of value to uh, to any of the speaking engagements that we do. He's also a very entertaining guy. So why don't I bring him into our conversation and we'll jump right into the presentation. Rob, you out there today? I am, I am. How's it going? <clears throat> Going very well. It's a, a hearing your voice, you're probably a little bit under the weather. So thank you very much for sticking it out today, and jumping on the webinar to uh, to you know assist in our efforts. Um, yes, man. I've been I've been traveling a lot, so I got hit with a sinus infection, and I wouldn't want to miss this. So if you could bear with my totally not sexy voice, I promise I will share some really good insight. Because um, my dad taught me when the when the tough get going the uh, tough gets easier. So I'm going to be tough and tough it out today. So thanks so much. And I'm going to try and clear up, make some tea. We'll see what happens. But I'm really looking forward to sharing some insight in my over, um, I think it's like 15 thanks years again. in insurance. So Th Thanks again for joining us, Rob. Uh, so let's sure. go ahead and jump into some of our, our techniques of, uh, you know, advancing um, our marketing efforts. And so, you know, the very first thing that comes to mind is, is maybe the most obvious, but a lot of times we kind of forget about this. And our current clients, the people that we you know, do business with every day, uh, are really probably the greatest source for us to do our marketing. Um, you know, people that know and love us um, and that we service already are going to be really kind of the low-lying fruit where it comes to 
uh, you know, our current business. They may have other needs. They may have um, people in their uh, their realm of uh, um, you know their house in in their you know immediate um, you know immediate client um, you know extensions. So uh, you want to be able to tap into that as much as you can. And uh, many years ago, when I was at State Farm, we did a study that produced what is uh, the three policy rule. And, and, and basically what that means is that um, where you have one policy in the house, uh, you stand a uh, you know 30% more likelihood that that client will reach out to you when they need something else. Uh, when you have two policies in that house, they are 60% more likely to reach out to you. And where you have three policies in that house, they are 98% more likely to reach out to you first uh, with an opportunity to help them with whatever that need is. So again, that three policy rule is a uh, incredibly powerful um, sort of um, solidification of that relationship. Got anything to share on that one, Rob? I do. Um, I, I just got to speak at an event for uh, businesses that sell promotional products. And I gave them a hint, and it's, all, it's based on a blog that I wrote. It's how to double your sales in 60 to 90 days. And basically the premise is call every one of your existing clients and ask for one referral. I would say ask for more than that. <clears throat> it's actually beneficial for a couple of reasons. A, it's proactive. Most salespeople in general, regardless of whether it's insurance, car sales, real estate, it doesn't matter, are very reactive when it comes to referral and, and tapping into your client base. Meaning they'll take it when it comes if they send somebody over and say, hey, you know, so-and-so told me to call you. That's not the way to really build your business to where it exponentially grows and you can eventually be sitting by a pool with a laptop writing renewals kind of thing, right? Which is what everyone wants um, to an extent, maybe not a pool. So I would say be a little more proactive and absolutely put together a referral rewards program within legal limitations of your state, of course, um, to where you can thank your existing client base for sending you referrals. One of the things I like to do that's very affordable is um, I do a uh, magazine subscription of their choice. Like I'll let them choose and then every month they get the magazine and who do they think of me? So it, it adds to retention as well. <clears throat> and of course it continues them giving me referrals. And that's all contingent upon you doing a great job and them, yes, like David said, loving you. Um, but I think most of the time we don't talk to our clients enough. So that second factor is that you will reach out and remain in contact with them, which is always a good thing. And then your, your retention rate goes up the more referrals you have and friends and family and coworkers, as well as more than one policy. So for me, it's all really beneficial. So you can't be shy about it. You know, asking is the number one thing in all sales, whether it's a needs analysis, asking for the sale, asking for a referral, et cetera. So if you want to build your business, do not be shy but you don't have to be pushy, but you could definitely be authoritative in a good way. Yep, I agree. Um, so uh, the next number two um, marketing tip is to use your cell phone where you are kind of traveling around. And this is something that I actually do very regularly. Uh, I'll do it, uh, you know, if I'm stopped at a light and I see somebody beside me with a, um, uh, a van that uh, has a telephone number, I'll shoot a, a photograph of that van. Uh, if I meet somebody and, um, you know, they happen to hand me a business card, I'll actually take a photograph of the business card because the photograph in my world will last a lot longer. Uh, that business card will get misplaced and put in a drawer and, and wherever else, and uh, and I'll lose it. So I have a tendency to kind of take photographs of those things and then uh, immediately I'll email it to myself so that I can have an electronic, um, you know, record of that, um, of that person's contact information. You know, uh, times when you, you know, go to the grocery store and you happen to pull into a storefront that's directly in front of your car or even adjacent or on your walk to the main place where you're headed, um, you know, taking photographs of some of the businesses along the way, uh, their storefront uh, a lot of times has their telephone number uh, uh, and the owner's name. 
so the the owners of these storefronts, a lot of times, um, will be a great opportunity for you to, you know, reach out and do things like, uh, you know, help them to cover their families with a life insurance policy or whatever their needs may be. The idea is to get their name and their phone number and whatever contact information you have uh, about the name of their business and such, uh, and load them into a database, which we'll kind of get a little bit further into uh, later on in our webinar. Um, Rob, you got anything to add to that one? I agree 100% on that. Uh, the other thing is I would even focus, and I'm not sure if this is a slide coming up. If it is, I apologize. But I would even focus on getting into some networking groups as well. Uh, the other thing I want to say is you can't be afraid to cold call. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people are trying to promote that cold calling is dead, cold calling sucks, et cetera. It sucks because most people suck at cold calling, unfortunately. I'm just going to keep it real. But if you know what you're doing and you can engage the client, and I, I want to share with you this one sentence that literally uh, increased cross-selling of life insurance by over 350% for an agency that I consulted with. It was literally this, and you're going to want to write this down. When is the last time anyone reviewed your life insurance to see if you're overpaying? And what that does is they're going to say, well, never, or I don't have life insurance. Or they'll say, no, I'm good. Mine's fine. Click. But you can literally qualify someone in 2.3 seconds to know if you can move forward and then make an appointment and give them a free review. So that's the one sentence that is so powerful yet so quick. So you could just dial 100 numbers in an hour and make appointments to go out or call back. Although I would try and sell it right then over the phone if someone's interested. Hint, hint, hint. Um, but that's, that's a great way to get people engaged and get a response. So that you're not wasting time just saying, oh, yeah, I sell life insurance. I help some people in your area. I hate all that stuff. I just want to get to the point and let me know if I could help you because that's what my job is, to help them out. So hopefully some of you will start using that, and I guarantee you'll have good results. Great tip. Hey, so Andrew, Andrew, our moderator, uh, every so often throughout the webinar, I'm going to reach out to him to sort of uh, run our poll. Um, so we're going to kind of take a poll of, of you as the agents on the webinar along the way and just kind of keep you a little bit engaged at the same time, learn some things about you. You can learn some things about us. Um, and so, Andrew, why don't you go ahead and launch our first poll? We'll get some answers on that one and then move forward in our webinar. So which of these has made life insurance more attractive in recent years? So the following um higher pricing greater death statistics living benefits or the ebola virus so let's go ahead and get those answers in quickly so we can move on with our presentation we're looking to get everybody to to, to add some sort of um you know guess on the on the um on the poll very quickly without Googling things, so we're going to keep the time frames pretty short to prevent that from happening. But um, Andrew, how are we doing on the percentage? Good, we got about fifty-seven percent voted. Okay, we'll keep why don't it we go ahead and count seconds. it down, and we'll shut that one down. All right. All right. So moving on. Get back to the screen. Charity events, um, you know, things like supporting uh, local families' needs, um, you know, child seat installation, uh, sponsored motorcycle rides, hurricane preparedness, uh, press releases, boating safety uh, tips and seminars, uh, child fingerprinting and, and photography classes, all of these things kind of, you know, doing a free event uh definitely will help you to build your um client database because you can gather uh information about those people who attend those people who are interested in being you know helpful in those events and uh and then you can use that moment uh having done this charity effort as an opportunity to then offer some services to these people and maybe even help their specific situation in a way that could help protect their families. So uh, these are just some ideas that that kind of came across my mind from things that uh, you know I've actually participated over the years in doing. 
And, um, and so I thought I'd throw those out there and even just stimulate your ideas about things that you maybe have an attachment to. Like for instance, the photography class. Uh, I, I am a, a professional photographer and have been for many years. So I do that as an opportunity to kind of meet new people and, uh, and, and get them into the world that, uh, you know, I might then be able to help and uh, offer some sort of solutions for their life insurance needs uh, and so on. And so I guess what I'm saying is in this particular case, where you have an interest in helping others, um, uh, you know, it could be any number of different things, but if you have something that you do or are very attached to or, or participate regularly in doing, uh, why not then use that opportunity to, you know, share your insight on, on the things that you know best uh, outside of the business of the insurance world and, uh, and help some folks to, to kind of just attach yourself with them in a very sort of giving way uh, that then kind of breaks down some of the barriers where it comes to, you know, hey, you want to buy some insurance. It, it doesn't kind of happen like that. You get to know them. You get to know about their families, their lifestyles, their interests, their uh, fears. And, and the things that really make them tick is really what makes them engage the process when you do end up asking the question, hey, you know, what have you done to protect your family? So, Rob, if you've got any insight on that. I just wanted to add, this is a great way to attract clients where that charity will resonate with them. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. And this, it goes along the lines of that now where everyone's doing content marketing and social selling, which I think we're going to touch on in a little while. But I wanted to add one other thing. David's going to cover a whole bunch of things that work and have worked for probably decades. Some of it's what I consider old school. And then we're going to cover some of the stuff that's new school. The point is it all works. The best part of it is that in this era of technological craziness where people have a career as a YouTube personality, you can make more money faster than ever before. So I just want everyone to be encouraged that whether one of these tips you don't want to use, use one of the other ones. Try them. You know, wash, rinse, and repeat. Um, the first time out, you might stumble. The next time, you'll nail it. And that's what this is about, just so you have more, uh, you know, quills or arrows in your quill, I guess, um, or quiver, whatever it is, <clears throat> so that you can start to build the business. Because people had a storefront back in the day, and they worked their butts off with cold calling, you know, mailing out mailers, a whole bunch of techniques. You don't have to do all that, but you should, based upon your goals, your monetary goals, and what it will take to get there. But this, for me, the charity events, you're going to, you're going to, like I said, attract the clients. And that, for me, is the best thing because they come to you because you're out there consistently, which means they know they can trust you. They know you can rely on you. It's not like you're someone fly-by-night sitting in your basement calling people and trying to make appointments. You, you look more like a legitimate business. So, for me, sponsoring anything charity-wise, showing up at the walks that they do for breast cancer, that goes a long way towards building credibility and trust. Without a doubt. Thanks, Rob. So uh, the What I Sell sheet, it's kind of um, a, a really important part of making sure that when you do a charity event or you show up at the, you know, the, the hurricane preparedness uh, seminar or um, you happen to bump into somebody that you know potentially you've known for a long time, but maybe they don't know exactly what you do. They know you sell insurance, but they really don't know what you do. And so being able to give them something, uh, preparing for yourself um, requires that you think exactly about what it is you would like to communicate as the 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 things that you do, the 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 business that you conduct has to be defined. And so a lot of times going through this effort can be the definition, where you actually create the definition of what you do as an insurance salesperson. I mean, are you selling property and casualty? Are you a financial planner? Are you a life insurance salesperson focused specifically on life insurance? Are you selling Medicare supplements or final expense? Or what is it exactly that you do? And when you meet somebody 
that uh, you know, you'd like to do some business with, it's really important to be able to hand them something that defines what it is that you do. Otherwise, you know, you get dragged into conversations that maybe, um, you know, take away from your potential to uh, really create a professional um, impression of what it is that you do. Um, so that's just a suggestion to, to kind of uh, really define what you do and spend some time, get on your computer, use one of the, you know, simple softwares that are, you know, out there today to sort of create a, a marketing piece that you can then uh, leave behind in any situation you get into uh, when talking about your business. I would also add that you should make that in a digital form so that you can have it downloadable from your website. Yep, without a doubt. All right, we'll move on to the next one. So um, this is one that kind of uh, you know starts jumping in on 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 you know the lead possibilities out there and and being in the business of you know actually buying leads uh, to to generate the next client. And somewhere along the way, you've got to have kind of a lot of these different things we're going to cover. Uh, and this is just one more of those things. What we've covered so far is more in the face-to-face -face community involvement and, um, you know, sort of uh, the I know you already kind of world. This stuff is venturing into, you know, ways to meet people that you don't know and you may never know. Um, and so there's a variety of different ways to to get leads uh, to be able to, you know, begin a process of, of, you know, trying to make a sale with somebody. And and we offer here in the office a, a variety of these uh, different types of leads, but you can also purchase them from hopefully reputable vendors out there in the world. We do a, a great job at, uh, at sort of dissecting who is a reputable vendor. And we bring to the table several of these types of uh, lead vendors that, you know, you can kind of uh, you know, know that uh, we have vetted them out and the, you know, the time that they have been within our environment has been a good experience. We kind of, we don't have a, a, a real um, formal rating, but the way that uh, a, a vendor exists and, and uh, sustains their relationship with us as an agency is to bring good value to the table. And, uh, and, and so a vendor that comes into our environment and offers product through us as a, um, a kind of a, a community uh, would then be very highly um, vetted out to make sure that we're offering you guys um, the, the absolute best that we can find in the industry. So whether you're buying, uh, you know, exclusive leads, age leads, lead, live transfers, telemarketed leads, uh, you know, TV leads, and so on, uh, the vendors that we can provide to you here are ones that we feel like are, are good quality, um, reputable vendors. Um, so those are other ways to kind of, you know, conduct more business. Got anything on that one, Rob? Yeah, um, you know, so like I was saying earlier, when people are struggling a little bit with the cold calling is what I was referencing specifically. They, they can often do that with leads as well, and they start to blame the lead sources. So I just want to put it out there. It's very important to understand that having an insurance license legally allows you to sell. It doesn't mean that everyone knows how to sell, as in to qualify, engage, do a needs analysis, build value, handle objections, close, follow up, et cetera. So if, if you're struggling with lead sources because – maybe you spoke to several people and nobody bought your job is to service them or in as as i like to say sell them but in the form of service so i just wanted you to keep in mind as you're going forward a lead source could be good but maybe you need to sharpen your sword a little bit and you know work a little longer until you get better at this for anyone out there who's new don't be discouraged because it's a really great great industry and um i, I i'm basically considered a telesales master so I teach people how to sell over the phone. So if you're selling face-to-face, -face, great. If you're selling over the phone, great. You can do both. And that's really what I want to express. Yes, if you position yourself to be an expert and, again, define your goals and then figure out how many leads do you have to buy, what do you have to invest, and then what do you have to reinvest to reach those goals as well. So 
I, want, I know I'm touching on a couple of things within that statement, but I just want to make sure everyone has a really good understanding of what it takes to be successful. Because sometimes people come into a situation like a multi-level marketing uh, opportunity or insurance, and they think it's kind of more simple than it is. So I want everyone to understand that it takes effort. And it is simple, but it's not easy because the formula for success is very simple. But it's not easy to get rid of our bad habits, embrace the new habits and um, formulas and techniques. So I just want to keep that, I want you to keep that in mind going forward. It well, will work if you work at it. Yep, it, it's a great, uh, you know, great statement, Rob. I appreciate that. And, and one of the reasons why I bring Rob on to the uh, presentations to uh, to share his insight is because he really, uh, you know, does a great job at helping to coach producers who are interested. Uh, and, and that's really his sweet spot is, is kind of like, you know, uh, teaching how to close and whether it's on the, on the, um, you know, telemar or uh, uh, selling over the phone or, or selling face to face or even just, you know, business consulting. Rob does a great job at that sort of stuff. So, any agents interested in that, obviously, you can touch base with Rob uh, after the webinar. Well, thanks for that. I'm, I'm, I'm super busy, but I've definitely uh, entertained anyone who really wants to embrace that. Yeah, so somehow I hit the wrong button, moved too far. So let's go back to this one. So Facebook, top of mind marketing. And so, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of ways to market on Facebook. Um, one of, the, one of the primary things that I've seen people doing is on their personal Facebook, they'll they'll manage a page for their business. So they, they actually create a page and it's, you know, Jim Smith's insurance uh, services. And, and so it's managed by Jim Smith's personal page and Jim Smith then posts on Jim Smith's insurance services, you know, things that would continually appear in Jim Smith's um, feed, uh, and he asks his friends to like and share uh, the information that is placed on that page. And it might be something like, you know, um, you know, Life Insurance Awareness Month. Uh, take care of your families. Be sure to, you know, secure coverage to to protect your families. And uh, and then so Jim Smith would share that and ask his friends to to like and share with their friends. Uh, and that can go a long way to kind of putting your image and your business name in front of other people to become a top of mind awareness. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we call it top of mind marketing. And it's basically just using Facebook to be there in the in the news feed so that um, when people are thinking about um you know, doing a, a uh, uh, transacting some sort of life insurance plan and, and, and they'll remember your advertisement or your sponsored ad in, uh, in their news feed. So uh, it's just something that you probably would want to do a little bit of research on. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to build these pages and how to manage these pages and, and work them uh, successfully to get yeah. leads. Um, but you know, staying on the top of mind when making when they're making a decision is really the the caveat that's important here. And so many people are on Facebook these days and see their advertising for things that they buy on Facebook. It's just a great place to sort of continue your effort in being a good marketer for your business. One hundred percent, and that's your marketing. Snapchat is the teenagers sending a photo, etc. Facebook is the market. For life insurance, because it's us older people, if I may say that, um, that still tend to go on there, haven't burnt out of it. But I, I want to add a secondary component of this. If you record a video that is, let's say, three ways to save the most money on your life insurance or three ways to choose the best life insurance policy for you, whatever it is, an attractive, engaging title, and you film this video and post it on your, your page, even if it's a personal business, it doesn't matter. You can repurpose that content in many different ways because there's a transcription service that I use called rev.com, R-E-V.com, that I can send them audio, and it's a dollar a minute, so it's a 15-minute video, $15. They will send me back a Word document. That Word document I can now make into a blog. I can also, also take pieces of the video because you can only do a minute on Instagram, right? There are certain video lengths. 
So you can take a, a few different minutes and just keep promoting off of one video. You can get so much traction. And social selling, people who have embraced social selling are either meeting or exceeding their goals at 30% higher than salespeople who are not embracing social selling. So you are losing sales if you something you're doing, yeah. So I want you to think about how you could actually repurpose that, a blog, video, even just take quotes. You might say something cool. I'm, I'm posting quotes all the time. Um, just so you keep in mind, there are a multitude of ways to do it. So one video gets a lot of traction. Yeah, great. Thanks, Rob. Um, hey, Andrew, let's go ahead and pop up another one of those uh, polls and see if we can get some more feedback from the audience. Sure. All right, 30 seconds on the board. Cool. So what state is Rob from? I'm from the state of confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you may know this by uh, listening to his accent, but that may be a little bit hard to pick up uh, because he's uh, he's not feeling very well and has a, a little bit of a rasp in his voice. Um, but uh, more than likely, it's something that you can probably get a correct answer on. Yep. And by the way, the previous poll, the correct answer was living benefits. I got that one right, even though I'm not allowed to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you got a timer on this thing, huh? Yeah, I got a timer. Closing in five. Five seconds. Nice. Wow. Go ahead and get your answer in real quick before we wrap that one up. <clears throat> Great. So, Andrew, let's go ahead and pop another poll so we can kind of get uh, moving and stay on our on our slides there. Got one more here. So, what is the website address for the AmeriLife Marketing Group? So, is it amgagents.com? Is it AmeriLifeMarketingGroup.com? Is it insurancerus.com is it senioramginsurance.com probably fairly obvious on that one but um, nonetheless we'll want to know and rob since the poll is closed on the previous poll what what <clears throat> state is it from so I'm going to try to say it how they say it here. I'm from New York, <laughs> or New York, as I said. Born, born and raised, grew up here, um, and probably you probably could see some tells or hear some tells in certain words that I say that give it away because I've had some people have no idea, think I'm from California because I have a more generic voice, but probably today you could tell. Plus, I'm a little fast-paced, so that helps too. But yeah, New York. There you go. The so city, the, other never poll, uh, the other poll went ahead and closed out. Uh, so hopefully you got a chance to get your answer in there. It is www.amerilifemarketinggroup.com. So that's a little plug for our website there. Uh, and let's go ahead and jump into, you know, probably a little bit more complicated style of advertising. Um, but nonetheless, there are producers probably on the webinar that may have uh the, the wherewithal to jump into this kind of advertising. It's, you know, television advertising, local television advertising can be very inexpensive. And so if you have the opportunity to sort of engage this type of advertising, it can be a very, very lucrative way to introduce people you haven't met yet in your area uh, for a sort of um, eh, maybe a lot less than you might expect cost. Um, and, and sometimes uh, they'll even shoot your commercial for free uh, on some of the local uh, broadcasting, uh, you know, channels. So um, that's something that to look into. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in that, in that, uh, but uh, it is something that you could potentially engage for very, very um, kind of minimal costs, and, uh, and then display an advertisement that could really uh, do a lot for you where it comes to generating leads. Um, so Rob, you got if to I can interject, one. yeah, 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 totally. I just want to give one little piece of advice that is incredibly helpful because you may want to jump into TV advertising, you might want to jump into flyers, but the number one thing you should do within the next week of hanging up this webinar is create a business plan. 
with a budget, with your goals, with your vision, your mission, et cetera. And I actually have a template of a great plan that I created. If anyone wants that, you can just email me at rob at robliano.com. Um, it's actually has some insight about, you know, how to create like your true vision and mission for your business because it's a business and you have to run it. And very often we get into businesses and don't have real knowledge of running a business. That's really common. So I would suggest with, I, I guess, uh, urgency that you really do look at this and design a business plan because it can just be really helpful. So you know where your finances are at, you know how much money you need to make, how much you need to reinvest. Cause I've seen people get caught where they buy leads and then they don't put any money, money aside to get newer leads when their commissions come in. Uh, and it can blow up your entire business and it's not worth it. So just a little side tidbit. Yep. Great idea. Um, thank you, Rob. So networking com and community events is our next uh, tip. So chamber of commerce, uh, meetup groups, professional organizations, uh, fishbowl giveaways at events, great way to build your, um, your network of um, uh, marketing opportunity for your contact management systems, um, building an email and uh, phone number database. So a CRM essentially uh, is really very, very important. And some of these community events are great ways to sort of uh, enhance your uh, client database. And so that is, uh, and if you're sitting at home thinking that, uh, you know, um, you know, the, the business is just going to come to you. It's just not the way that it works. It takes getting out there in the community and within, you know, uh, whether it's an online community or, uh, you know, a local community or both. Uh, it does require that, you know, especially in the very early stages of a career that you really engage and put a lot of effort into making sure that you are out there telling people what it is that you do every day. Um, and so I could not stress that enough. Rob, you got anything on this one? Yeah, I just want to, I, I was literally thinking that is you have to let people know what you do, including your friends and family. And I don't mean be like the Ned Ryerson of Groundhog Day, although he does employ very great sound sales skills in that crazy portion of the uh, movie. But if people don't know what you do and they need help, they're going to have to go somewhere else and they may not get the same help from you because you already care about them. So you'll, you know, put the right time, the right effort into finding them the right thing. Like a friend of mine came up to my, I, I have a apartment of, now I'm in Brooklyn near the Arizona bridge where Saturday night fever was filmed, but I have a video studio and he came up to shoot a video of holding his new son, asking his friends in California in case they don't know, he sells life insurance and he has a ton of friends there. So he did a video to promote that so they know. And he told me a great story because he's done real estate and he has someone looking for a house and they didn't ask him. And he said, how come? And they said, well, I totally forgot that you do that. So you have to be promoting, get your name out there. Don't be shy when it comes to your career, your money and taking care of clients. So networking, yes. Anything you can do for me, you can start your own networking group of businesses. Uh, we're a part of one here, actually, that, you know, we meet once a week in the morning, which is way too early for me, but I do it anyway. Um, but anything like that, just look up for, you know, look up meeting groups, networking, and, and make sure people know what you do. Get, you know, get business cards. You should be handing out 500 a month everywhere you go. Just say, hey, just in case you ever need any help, this is what I do. You never know. Someone can call you back a year later. I had, when I was selling insurance, when I wasn't training as much, I had people call a year later saying, yeah, I have your card on my refrigerator. I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> Don't remember who they are, but wound up writing a policy. So it's planting the seeds, you know, sowing and reaping. But again, people must know what you do in order to seek you out. And it's got to be a little consistent. Don't be afraid to post on Facebook several times. People are not going to promote you for you. I've had people say, hey, man, are you putting up all these quotes? You're advertising this ebook." I go, well, are you going to do it for me? And they say, no. I'm like, then I'm going to keep doing it, man, because that's my job. You know, and that's how we, we become successful. You, you can't be afraid. So just go for it. Yep. Thanks, Rob. Seminars. So I, I actually love seminars. Um, they um, uh, give you an opportunity to to be in front of a group of people as a professional and and really, you know, uh, share with them things that are in your wheelhouse of knowledge. 
and uh, and it may be just be you know exactly what they need to know. You may be that expert to stand in front of them and give them uh, some insight that they did not know. And that really kind of puts you in a very professional and uh, kind of an expert's position where it, it pertains to whatever it is they showed up to learn. Um, so you can do these in community centers, uh, in restaurants. Many times restaurants will have a you know kind of uh, a room off to the side where you know they're used to having insurance agents make presentations and so you can do invites to these um, and, and and fill a room with uh, attendees that came to hear exactly what you are most knowledgeable at, uh, about um, uh, you can use flyers and mailers and uh, you can uh, do uh, Chamber of Commerce events where you're sharing with business owners in the community things that you are most knowledgeable about. Um, and, and many times the Chamber of Commerce will will give you the floor and, and you know, members show up to the meetings and, and then, you know, they're kind of a captive audience for you to be able to share with them your insight. What do you think, Rob? Got anything on that one? Yeah, let me, I mean, I want to give you one really good tip for what to do at a seminar. Because um, it's really, seminars are really so effective and unfortunately very overlooked. Uh, not a lot of people do it, but I want to give you one piece of advice and then one tip. The piece of advice is don't sell. When you do a seminar, you want to educate people. You don't want to just be offering products. Uh, like when I was doing health seminars, I would literally ask, hey, can someone just tell me what they're paying? for their health insurance. And I would pick a couple, you know, and they'd be paying like, you know, 800 months. And I said, okay, so just as an example, now rates have dropped, you know, you could shop around and I would run their numbers and I'd say, and see, and now they're coming up at $450 a month. What's your, you know, what's your deductible or your co-pays, et cetera. And I'm going back before the ACA plans hit. And then I would just move on. But every single time I chose a couple, they come up and say, hey, I can get that plan for like $350 less every time because I wasn't selling I was educating. So I want you to focus on that if you do a seminar. The second thing is, if someone, when you invite people, you need to ask this question. Does anyone coming have a birthday, either that month of the seminar, or the month before, or the month after? And bring a birthday cake with candles and have everyone in that room sing happy birthday to whoever has a birthday that within that three-month span. And let me tell you, that goes a long way towards people feeling great. And when they feel great, they like you. You now position yourself as an expert who cares about people. Boom. It's an amazing technique to immediately grasp this audience. Everyone's in a great mood. Happy birthday. I mean, you know, whether you're 90 or 9, everyone likes singing happy birthday. So I think it's really effective. Yeah. Yep. So, Andrew, pop in our next uh, poll, and we'll uh, keep moving right on through our slides. We've got about 15 minutes left in our hour's time together, so I want to kind of make sure we're, we're covering everything. How many policies does it uh, does a direct agent need to write to receive marketing credits at AmeriLife Marketing Group? So we actually uh, give marketing credits, which are essentially is cash that you can spend to uh, buy things like leads. Um, uh, you can buy E and O with this marketing credit. You can, uh, you know. Um, use it for uh, telemarketed leads, you can use it for direct mail, you can use you know this money for a variety of things. Essentially what it is, is it's our way of rewarding you for having done a good job. So um, how good of a job do you actually have to do? How many policies? Is it 20? Is it 10? Is it 100? Or is it 25? That is the question. Hopefully you'll know the answer and we'll keep right on rolling. So there you have it. The answer is 10. So you've got to write 10 pieces of business and then, you know, we provide that marketing credit to you and you can uh you can then uh use it to uh to purchase a variety of things uh with essentially our money, our reward to you and thank you for uh, doing a great job as an agent. So let's get back in here. The next tip is write a newsletter. Uh, gather some facts from the internet, emails, uh, mail, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Um, so sometimes there are things uh, that uh, are, are legal. Um, you know, you can't, you can't uh, 
you know, if you're going to say things that uh, sort of are in a compliance regulated area, you want to consult uh, somebody in a, in a legal environment. Uh, before you do that sort of thing. But a lot of times you can write about things that, you know, I think are very interesting to uh, to publish as a newsletter. Um, so that's just a, a, a quick a tip for those people that like to uh, do the research, to find the statistics out there, to to reference the, um, uh, the statistics that you find in a uh, kind of a, um, you know, educational, and valuable type of blog or newsletter type uh, that you can then send to the people within your database. I know, Rob, you've got some insight on this because I know you used to, to do a, a nice newsletter as well. Thanks, yeah, totally. Uh, my, my hamsters were spinning around while you were going over this. Um, <laughs> number one is super, super huge for retention because you're touching your client every month where most agents never reach out in any way. In fact, I had a, a client that said, hey, you know, you're the only person that it's like eight or nine months after you sold me insurance and I keep, you keep sending me newsletters. And he invited me to his burden the mortgage party in Michigan somewhere, I, I, like just a few years ago, um, just because of that. So, you know, we need to focus on A, client acquisition, B, client retention, and then C, client loyalty. A newsletter goes to client loyalty. And I used to do some fun things with mine. I would add uh, like a recipe because if it was, you know, summer coming up, I would add like, you know, some kind of smoothie or something. I would actually celebrate my parents' anniversary, put a picture of them. I made it very personal along with information and I might have a product of the month if there was at the time a dental plan special or something like that. Um, because it wasn't just um, a business newsletter. It was a relationship building newsletter because the relationship is what we want because, again, that leads to loyalty. So. There are some cool things. I, I, you know, I would just create a template, and there are so many things you can use. My favorite one is called Send in Blue. It's an email marketing tool, Send in Blue, like uh, the letter blue. I mean, the color blue. Dot com. I use it for several different purposes, but it's the easiest, most reliable one I've found, so, and it's super cheap. I think it's like free up to a certain amount of clients. So there's really no reason why you cannot immediately implement a monthly newsletter. If you're not mailing it, if you're mailing it, yes, but I'm talking about email newsletter and everyone gets because everything is going towards digital. So you can do both. Uh, I personally almost never open an email that comes here. I actually wonder why people send me mail. I think it's a waste of money and trees, but it's all good. So in this age of the digitalization of everything, you want to definitely do an email monthly newsletter. So, Rob, we've got about 10 minutes left in our hour. We may end up running a little bit long today, but I want to make sure we cover a couple of these slides. Some of them coming up are, are kind of uh, reiterations of things we've covered already, so we'll move very quickly over those. Uh, cool. But the next, the next one's actually pretty important. Um, a door knocking on the Turning 65s. Um, and so uh, I actually did a webinar on this just, uh, I believe it was uh, last month, um, that we recorded and is actually stored on our YouTube channel. Uh, and Andrew uh, is going to send out a, a uh, uh, an email after the webinar thanking you for for joining us. It will include the link to the you know the the webinar that we did for for door knocking on the Turning 65 gold mine. Um, I, I did the webinar with a, a really really uh, successful door knocking agent uh, named Todd Pierce. And uh, if you happen to be on that uh, webinar, you, you, you hopefully got a lot out of that. It was a great webinar. Um, but if you'd like to access it, we have it stored for you. Uh, it's both on our website and our YouTube channel. And again, Andrew will send you a link to both. Uh, so we'll I'm move put it on. in the chat as well. Say again? I'm going to put it in the chat as well, if anybody great. wants to check it out. Uh, so we covered referrals, which is the next slide. Um, so don't be afraid to ask is the moral of that story. Uh, the car marketing kit. This is something that uh, uh, a friend of mine showed me. He has in his trunk essentially a briefcase, uh, but it's it's more like a, uh, almost like a laundry hamper. <laughs> but this, this uh, you know, trunk marketing uh, kit that he's got has everything in it uh, everything from business cards to flyers and he's got pens he's got note taking um, you know paper in there and so on and what he's done is he's actually 
you know, made his car, uh, you know, someplace, he goes everywhere with it. So he's obviously going to have these things with him. And um, he's done a really good job at designing the, uh, the materials that he has in his car to be able to market his business. And, uh, and, and so that's, that's another great tip to, to, tip, uh, to jump on. Uh, also things like little league and, and fire departments and, and high school events and so on. Anytime you involve yourself in some of these community events and fairs and, and, and whatnot, uh, you know, do things like have a fishbowl uh, giveaway uh, when you do them. Uh, but just putting your name associated with the Little League or the fire department or things like that, um, it really adds to your community involvement that can go a long way to being that top of mind awareness where people, you know, save your magnet and put it on the refrigerator like, like Rob's business card. Um, those kind of things can be really, really valuable uh, and sustaining life, uh, you know, um, uh, marketing tools. Something like Fiverr. Fiverr is a great resource. If you've not done anything on Fiverr before, uh, essentially what you've got is a, a, a marketing assistant, if you will, for creative help. Things that you may not be able to design quite yourself, you can offer up. Uh, and, and people will actually bid on doing the work for you, but uh, it's called Fiverr because it's essentially a five dollars. Uh, it's you know you can get things done for five bucks. So it's very very inexpensive. And Fiverr's uh, you know I've I've used Fiverr a lot in my um, you know just uh, creative uh, efforts. Uh, a lot of times if I just don't have time to do something, I'll pop it out on Fiverr and see if I can get somebody to, to bite on it and design it for me. Um, telemarketing, it, it, you know, um, a very easy way uh, to, uh, you know, open the door if you want to, you know, hire some folks that, uh, that do that for you. We actually have a telemarketing service that, uh, that generates leads for us at 10 bucks a piece. Uh, they actually, they're there for you in the event that you have an interest in utilizing them. Um, uh, you can feel free to contact your marketer to get more information on, on how you can have this telemarketing service working for you for 10 bucks per lead. Um, message on hold. When someone calls you and, and they happen to, to, to be put on hold, you'll want to have a message on that that sort of talks about your business, says the things that are in your what do I do sales material. Um, you'll want to talk about promotion things that you'll be working on. And, and right now would be a great time to change your message to, you know, be something related to Life Insurance Awareness Month. So I would encourage you to do that. Um, next thing I, I want to interject on that one if I can. Yeah, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, cool. So I agree 100%. Everyone's voicemail message, if, if someone calls to leave you a message, is generally terrible. I'm either away from my desk or on the other line. Away from my desk means what? You're not working. Are you in the bathroom? I mean, I don't know where how that became like the norm. Um, or I'm on the other line. So I want to give you a little tip of what I crafted, if I can remember it, uh, about how to engage people so that it will elicit a call back because we, we want them to leave a message so we can call them back, right? We don't want to click when they go to a voicemail. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I used to say, Hey, this is Rob Liano, and if you want the best price on your health insurance, or you can say life insurance, leave your name and number after the beep, and I'll return your call as soon as I'm done serving another satisfied customer. So it doesn't seem like I'm away from my desk in you know, Wonderland. I'm helping somebody else because that's what I do, and I will help you next. So I have people who are like, yeah, I want the best price. Give me a call back. And I got more probably voicemail messages than many salespeople in my agency combined. So it's just a little tidbit is how you craft that to get that message left so that you can then engage them because they're going to hear the same generic one over and over again and probably hang up. So if you can add a little creativity to yours, do it. So great job. Thank you, Rob. Um, your website, um, call me for a quote, click here for a quote, uh, that kind of thing. You'll want to make sure that you have a call to action on your website for people that find your website and, and, and where you get traffic. You'll want to make sure that you have an opportunity to gather their information. And so if they click there, you want them to have to put in their name, 
uh, and, and email address and whatever other you know gathering points you want to to uh, to get uh, so that you can remarket them. Uh, that's incredibly uh, important and powerful. Uh, I do know some agents who actually do their own radio show. So where they are, um, you know, for instance, we live in Florida here, and and um, there are radio stations that you can sort of promote things like Medicare supplement, uh, you know, better understanding of Medicare supplements and so on. And that doesn't mean you have to do a show every day uh, or uh, once a week. You can be a, like a guest on somebody else's show or just purchase some time to be able to do your show and then promote it. And this is something that you may want to kind of like investigate the, the, the ways to do it and the costs in doing such. But um, but I do know several agents who are very, very good at doing this process. And I thought I'd throw it in and share it with you. Um, yeah, I'd like to add one thing to that. Remember we were talking earlier about doing a video and then making that into a blog. You could also turn that into a podcast because if you just extract the audio from the video, you now have a podcast, a.k.a. radio show. Those podcasts are so powerful. People can listen whenever they want, subscribe to your channel. So if you start doing videos, again, another piece of multipurposing and absolutely essential tool. Also, if you did want to be a guest, I'm going to share this website. It's called radioguestlist.com. Radioguestlist.com. You can start getting an email that says what people are looking for, what kind of speakers on their already established radio shows. I've done a ton of guest spots about sales or motivation from this list. So check that out as well. Yep. So um, the next tip is email marketing. And so you want to make sure that when you're gathering this information, um, you know, whether it's your community events, your um, uh, business card gathering, your, uh, you know, taking photographs of people's storefronts and whatnot, you want to be able to put this, this data into uh, a contact marketing or contact CRM type uh, program that you can then email market from. And so, you know, when you have uh, months like uh, September being Life Insurance Awareness Month, you can, you can then begin to communicate that message specifically and directly to those same people. Uh, and again, staying top of mind in the world of the people that you are engaging with. And again, it comes from community events and and so on all these different things that we're coaching you to do the gathering of the data so that you can then remarket and be the top of mind when it comes time to making a decision about buying insurance um, that that's the main moral of that story and folks i know we're uh, running over on time but uh thank you for sticking with us we're gonna you know just kind of keep right on rolling so that uh, we don't miss any of these tips uh, we've got a bonus tip here for you. Uh, this is a program I discovered some time ago. It's called Hatchbuck. It essentially is a CRM, uh, but it is a powerful CRM that gives you the ability to market on somebody's Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter account, and so on, and, um, and do that all from one uh, sort of, um, you know, source. So Hatchbuck is the source. So you enter your data, you, you know, then create a campaign to s send your marketing uh, out to, and then Hatchbuck essentially is the execution mechanism that delivers the message into all these different mediums. So no matter where your client goes, if they regularly go to Twitter, they're going to find that message on their Twitter feed. If they regularly go to Facebook, they're going to find that message on Facebook and so on. And so that's something that I would encourage you to research um, and, 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 and you know, become an expert at utilizing some of these tools out there. Um, yeah, Hatchbuck is great. It's so much more um, feature rich than the one I was mentioning earlier because it's a CRM and you can track clients, put up notes in for a phone call. So I would actually recommend this. Yep, it is not very expensive, but nonetheless, there is a cost associated to it. It is a simple CRM that kind of pulls in the uh, the contacts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on, uh, and gathers all those uh, sort of profiles 
and then gives you an avenue to push content into. It's a really powerful tool. Uh, I'm going to skip over a couple of things here, but uh, essentially what that tool does is it automates your process so that you're not doing, you know, one thing at a time. You're doing multiple channels of marketing all at once. So a pretty powerful tool. Um, you know, I, I want to you know go ahead and 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 uh, thank everybody for showing up today. If there are any questions, go ahead and, and feel free to type in your questions now. Um, but uh, while that's happening, uh, Andrew, why don't you launch one of our polls here? How did you hear about the webinar? Did you did you happen to find it on the, the LinkedIn post that I made? Was it uh, in an email? Was it uh, from your marketer? Or was it on Facebook? We're really interested in making sure we're in front of you and doing a good job in our marketing efforts. So uh, it's important for us to get the feedback and data related to you know, how you found out about uh, our webinar today. Andrew, anytime you get a question, you can just hop right in on that one. All right. Hopefully we've covered everything in pretty good detail uh, that uh, maybe there won't be so many questions, but I know uh, Rob does a great job at sort of, uh, you know, expanding on some of the, the points that we're making in these slides. So hopefully that'll uh, kind of uh, eliminate some of the questions, but nonetheless, we're, we're here. If you've got the questions, we're happy to, to answer them and we're happy to extend the, uh, uh, the webinar just a little bit here to make sure we uh, we're, we're getting all of those questions answered. So Rob, as always, here. yeah, go ahead. Uh, somebody wanted to know what were the, the voice message, uh, voicemail message that Rob suggested was again. Yeah, go ahead and repeat that one. Yeah, yeah, so I, and I'll try and talk not like a New Yorker and do it a little more slowly. So I would say, hey, you've reached Rob Lieto. If you want the best price on your life insurance, Leave your name and number, and I'll return your call as soon as I'm done serving another satisfied customer. That's more simply put. So, hey, this is Rob Lieto. If you want the best price on your life insurance, or you can say health insurance, you know, best plan at the best price. You can phrase it however you like. Leave your name and number after the beep, and I'll return your call as soon as I'm done serving another satisfied customer. Was that slowly enough, hopefully? Yes. And thank I want to thank everyone for dealing with my voice, man. I'm, I'm going to listen back to this and hate every moment of it. So I appreciate your patience of me sounding horrific here. So yeah, and don't forget uh, the webinar is being recorded. So if you happen to miss something on the yeah. webinar and you'd like to replay it, uh, it Great. will be available. On, <laughs> the, uh, it'll live forever, Rob. Um, but yeah, no, I'm was, sorry, Rob. <laughs> Andrew was kind enough to put the link to our YouTube channel on the um, uh, the chat window there in case you want to sort of jump in and, and find that location. Save it as one of your favorites. Um, if you haven't already, add me on LinkedIn so that uh, we can make sure that you are up to speed on all the happenings that are you know, going on here at the AmeriLife Marketing Group. Uh, we, as always, are interested in bringing more and more value to you as our business partners. So uh, please engage, call your uh, marketer, uh, talk to them about the things that we do and, and find out everything you need to know so that you can get all the value that we bring to the table out of doing business with us. Uh, I wanna uh, go ahead and thank Rob Liano for joining us today on the webinar. He's always a, a lot of fun to, to do a presentation with. We certainly value his time and, uh, and his insights as a sales coach. So thank you again, Rob. Anytime, man, you know I love you, my brother. Uh, feelings are mutual, my friend, and um, we will uh, thank you, uh, Andrew, also for helping us with our polls today. We had a couple more polls. We didn't quite get to them, but uh, they were more uh, for entertainment value than anything. They had nothing to do with insurance, but um, uh, nonetheless, they were, uh, you know, uh, we, we missed out on the opportunity to do this because we were trying to fill the, the webinar with as much content as we could. So again, Not thank you time, everyone right? to, uh, for joining us today. And thank you, Andrew, for helping out with the, uh, the webinar. So I hope you thank all you. have a great day and um, take care, everybody.
लिख दीजिए